All right, I'm just gonna do a video talking about the uh, Baofeng BFA58, UV9R, and a couple other models are very similar to this one. So this may apply to those as well. Wanted to do a video talking about it, and the, there's already videos out there showing what comes in the box and that it's waterproof and dustproof and all that stuff. So I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about differences from the UV5R type family Baofeng radios and why I went with this instead. Uh, this isn't a UV5R, but it's in the same family of it. <clears throat> I'm gonna go over the positives, the negatives, and uh, some of the quick operational differences. Uh, biggest operational difference, and the main reason why I decided to go with this radio, was instead of having the crappy connection system on the side, that's like the two pins and headphone jacks, the screw is still on this one. I'll take it off. You latch on and you screw down the connector. And this has like a little glazing over it to help it be waterproof. And most of the connectors, whether it's a cheap Baofeng one, the one that comes with the radio, or some of the better Sky Eye tactical push to talks or other options that are out there for these radios, it's not gonna wear out and become loose or fall out when it's in your pocket, your pouch, or let water get into your radio. So that was the biggest reason why, and also the fact that these are waterproof and dustproof, they say. Um, I haven't taken mine and fully submerged it in water or anything like that, but um, it's certainly gotten wet with sweat, rain, you name it. Uh, I'm in South Texas, and I go out to West Texas a lot to the ranch too. Plenty of dust. Uh, I let my kids grab these and run around with them. They've been dropped and slammed. Uh, my very first one of these I got over two years ago, and I'm not out there training and banging it up every day, but it stays on my kit and drags across the ground and gets slammed, and it still works perfectly fine. Nothing is broke on it. So that's a plus. One of the other pluses too, with some of the options that you can do on the computer with this thing. Now, one of the things that these radios are notorious for and you can't disable, accidentally doing that or accidentally doing that and turning the FM radio on. Can't tell you how many times some of my buddies were out in the woods. Uh, we were actually looking for um, some people trespassing on a neighbor's ranch and they kept hitting the FM radio button and giving away our position. Um, and of course, with their volume all the way up, they weren't using a push to talk or a headset. You know, all of a sudden, some Spanish stations started freaking blaring. Definitely not cool. On this, you can disable the feature for FM radio, which would be this button, this little accessory button up top here. You can see it won't even start because I have it disabled. Um, this button will, like that one, also enable the alarm, which sucks, but. I don't know if you could tell. The little transmit on the top left, it doesn't transmit that over the radio frequency. You could disable it in that sense. I would love for this to be able to be completely disabled where it wouldn't even do that locally. Uh, there's also an emergency button up here, which is more like the Motorola one. I wish you could at minimum disable it on this key and leave the emergency button for up here because this is much harder to hit by mistake. As far as the menu options and the programming goes, it's virtually the same as the UV5Rs. So that's why I haven't decided to make a video on how to really program these things because you can look up any video on how to program a Baofeng radio, both by hand using the keypad and by using the Chirp software on the computer. And this is gonna work basically the same except for the fact that your interface, you'll have to get the type of USB adapter that plugs into this instead of the two pin. As I was editing and I got to the point looking over, I was talking about programming with the Chirp software. One thing that's a huge advantage over these that I've found over the UV5R, if you have experience with programming the UV5Rs on the computer, you can have an issue where say you have like one standardized file with uh, frequencies and stuff like that stored you'll need to make separate files depending on the type of firmware. This radio hasn't had that problem. I've programmed probably 20 of these and I've never had to make a new file because of a firmware change. I'm not sure if 
the firmware is just the same. They don't have multiple types. Uh, I didn't think to check that. I just saw that it worked. That is one huge advantage over the UV5R. So if you get people in your group that get these over time, you shouldn't have an issue of having to make a brand new file for them to load your channel frequencies and stuff like that on, or if you buy a replacement yourself. Okay, so some of the keypad differences, and bear with me while I'm holding my phone, this is gonna be a little tricky to do. On these, you have the AB button to switch between your two lines. So if you wanted to switch, my keypad's locked. If you wanted to switch between the two, you can see the little arrow on the left. And then also, switching between frequency and channel mode different on here so in order to switch you can see it booted in frequency mode by holding menu and turning it on and it's gonna stay like that okay it did say frequency mode that time I must not have turned it up high enough anyway so to change it back there now it's back in channel mode this is great as far as using it as a tactical radio because then by mistake it is pretty easy if this is in your pouch and you're laying on the deck or something like that to say it unlocks and all of a sudden you hit that and you didn't really realize it inside of your pouch or your pocket or something like that and then all of a sudden you're off frequency and oh shit what the hell happened so that's not going to happen with this like some of the other uh, Baofeng radios this bottom button is what turns your light on up top this is another feature that I kind of wish you can disable uh, it's not able to be disabled. You can hold it and it'll turn your squelch down to zero. So if you were trying to reach someone really far away and they keep coming in broken, you can hold that and hopefully you'll be able to hear something coming through from them. Some of the other things you can do with the keypad as well is if uh, you hold down number three and turn it on, it's gonna show you your firmware. And then you can hold down number six and turn it on and it shows you some number, uh, all my research, nobody even seems to know what it is. I guess it, it could be some sort of date code for when it was built. Uh, I guess it's if it goes back to Baofeng. Uh, completely irrelevant to us, but I just realized that you could do that. Another difference is moving that line back and forth. If it's unlocked, obviously it needs to be unlocked. Unlock. You hit exit. And that moves you back and forth. Same thing when you're menu. in your menu. Squelch. It exits you right out. You can hold zero. It'll show you your battery voltage real quick, which is cool. The charger base is different on these than it is for the uh, UV5R families, but the supplied power coming into the charge base is the same. So I had a video I made a long time ago about having a USB adapter for this. And here it is. This is a great option to have because who doesn't have something that will charge USB? You can plug it into a laptop, you can plug it into a battery bank like this. You know, like I have this little Ryobi power unit that has USB in it, that when it's turned on, it'll start charging stuff off of it. I have a USB bank that uses AA batteries, and I even have an adapter that you can plug into the bottom of your smartphone and charge it off your smartphone if you actually had to. I mean, there's so many different options, even hooking a solar panel directly up. The only real disadvantage I can say to this is these have these great extended batteries that make them a little bit more beefy in your hand or a little bit taller, so you can even just put these in a regular mag pouch. A um, whole bunch of people have made pouches specifically designed around this family of radio with the extended battery. No extended battery for this. Though I did finally find a source for spare batteries on this. It's like 20 bucks or two or something like that shipped. Not a bad deal at all. And even with this little battery, I mean, me out hiking around the ranch and talking to my neighbors and other people that I'm out there with, I can go a whole day and into the evening before I run out of battery, sometimes even to the next day. I just bought the spare and I keep one of them on my kit. And I wish they had a better way of charging it uh, besides Having to put it in the charger like this would be fantastic if it had something like a little USB-C port in the side like some of the newer Baofeng radios are getting or even like on these extended ones you can get the USB adapter that goes into that little hole so you could charge it very easily out in the field. One quick thing I forgot to talk about is your belt clip piece. 
the the one was nice and simple on the UV 5Rs. Uh, you probably noticed that there isn't even one on here. There is an option for it, and that's what this screw is for. And the way that it works is there's like a little circular knob that you put on here that sticks out like three eighths of an inch, and then that slides and locks into a clip that will go on your belt that sticks out like another quarter inch or more. So it's it's really big and bulky and it swings around and it's kind of stiff. That's the reason why I don't even put them on there. I'll just stick it in my pocket. Um, I would have really liked to see this type retained or they do something similar to what Motorola has where you can remove the battery and it will like quickly snap it into place on the battery. Um, but yeah, I wanted to make sure I added that in as well. Uh, keeping the knob off also makes it more streamlined for putting inside a pouch on your gear. Still like the A58, I think it's the best option out there right now. That's what I'm going to continue to run on my kit until I find something else.